Welcome to Exomagitrix number 792. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Exomagitrix 792 to 793, click on the link below the video. In this video here, we want to talk about defined names. Now, here's a formula right here, sum if. Uh, the criteria is here, dates. The, the criteria is actually this date, and then the values to be added are in this range right here. So this formula uses cell references, which are totally awesome. But sometimes we want to use defined name. All a defined name is, is instead of saying A2 to A13, if we name this range invoice date, then we can use a word there, invoice date. And it will know to look at these cells, take the numbers, and use them in the form function formula to make their calculations. Define names can be easy if you're referring to the same range often. It also can prevent errors if you're highlighting the same range uh, uh, often. And also sometimes people like to read the formula, right? Because if it says units, uh, invoice date, units, and criteria instead of cell references, then understanding the formula may be a little bit easier. All right, let's look at the basics. Here's the name box if I hover my cursor. If I were to have this cell selected right here, A, uh, D9, if I click up here and call this type result, this is the name box, I'm typing in it, I have a previously selected a cell, if now I hit enter, that cell is now named result. If I click here and come over to the name box, I can point to the drop down and click result, and it jumps right there. So actually, define names could be a navigation tool. I could literally be on sheet 794, go up to the name box, select whichever name I want, and boom, I jump right there. Now names, that is stored in memory. Let's go, where, let's go see where to look in case you want to edit or delete formulas, and name manager. The keyboard shortcut to show name manager is control F3. You have your list of names. Select your name. You can edit. This is helpful if sometimes the range changes, or the cell range changes, or the name changes. I'm going to click cancel. You can also delete. You can also create names from scratch. So I'm going to delete this. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yes. Now. The main point of this video is to show you two things, how to use Name Manager to create names like that, but also how to create names from selection and uh, apply names. Now, notice we named this column smartly. The field name is at the top. Well, if I highlight this range here and use the keyboard shortcut, it'll automatically take the name in the first top cell and name this column that, this column that. But watch this. We can also highlight a cell not next to it called, called non-contiguous. I'm going to hold my control key and highlight that right there. So now this, this cell will be named criteria, this column will be named units, and this column will be invoice date. Now you could go up to, if I even remember, oh, create names from selection. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut, control shift F3. Now it's polite. It says top row and left column because it thinks you might want names from the left column, but we don't. So I'm going to simply have my computer freeze up. I don't know what was happening there. Left column, I'm going to uncheck that. Just select top row and click OK. Let's check this out. No way criteria. My cell jumps right there. I'm testing an invoice date. Highlights right there. Unit. Let's go up to Name Manager, Control F3. And then you can, again, see that they're all here. Edit them, delete them. Now, let's see how to use these names in a formula. I'm going to close this right here. Now, down here we did the sum if. Let's do the same thing up here. Instead, we'll use define names instead of those cell references. Sum if. Now, sum if will allow us to add some numbers here given a certain criteria. So we'll add only the ones in yellow because there's a uh, dates in this column that match there. The range, that's got to be the criteria. So we're going to see three ways. Remember, that cell and these two columns are named. We're going to see three ways to insert names into formulas. The first one is you can simply highlight. Look at that. It just automatically knows that that's a defined name and puts, puts it in, comma. Another way is we can use the F3 key. So if you forget or you're in your some other part of the spreadsheet and you forget what the name is, if you hit the F3 key, it gives you paste name. 
then you could double click or uh, yeah double click this and criteria will be inserted a third way is the sum range you can simply start typing like I know that this is supposed to be units right here so I type u and sure enough the function list pops up function lists also have defined names table names like that once you see it on the list notice it has a, a little dog tag there you can either double click it or if it's highlighted in blue you can insert All right so that's pretty clever there we can see invoice date criteria units um, Another thing you might want to do, and down here I have this paste define name, which is what we just did. We used the F3 key. Or it can create a list of names. Notice we are in edit mode and we hit F3 and so we, it thought we wanted to insert a name. But let's go ahead and click in this cell right here and hit the F3 key. Now we can insert a name, but this is a new button we didn't just see, we didn't see just a moment ago. If you select or click on paste list, it just puts a list there. There's the names, there's the range. Uh, another trick here, these formulas were already created before we created the define names. We can use the apply names feature and it will automatically replace any cell references that have a defined name. I'm going to highlight um, right here, up to formulas, define name, I don't know the keyboard shortcut for apply names, but apply names, what it will do is it will search through that range there and it sees those cell references and uh, we can simply highlight all three of these those are the names that should go there and click OK whoa look at that totally amazing uh, let's look at one more uh, simple example because people like you know you can see here that the names are kinda nice but because um, it tells you what those ranges are if you have revenues and expenses in fact, I'll spell this out. Hopefully, I'm spelling right. So you had, uh, and maybe total expenses. And obviously, this could be at the bottom of a column, right? Oh, total expenses were very high. So you could do a net income formula like this. Again, I'm going to use my little trick. I'm going to highlight this range, Control Shift F3. It's saying, oh, they must be in the top row. I'm going to click OK. So then I can go net income. Well, net income is always revenue. I typed it out. As soon as I see it show up and the name is blue, I can hit tab, minus total. Now I can arrow down, get this, and then tab, and then enter. So that formula, revenue minus total expenses, uh, and it could be total revenue minus total expenses, but that is the formula for net income, and sometimes people like to see their formulas. Tell them exactly what the calculation is. Now, I just did a little trick there. Notice I have no space here, so we have to look at the naming convention, and names must begin with text, not a number, no spaces, no cell references. What that means is you can't have a name called uh, tax 101 or tax 2011 because there's a cell named tax 2011 in fact I gotta show you here's another great use for the name box watch this not only can we select uh, this and then jump right I jumped right to that cell but you can type a uh, cell reference in here so watch tax 2011 when I hit enter that's a go-to box in essence, and I've jumped to tax 2011. Of course, there's a return on equity uh, 1999 too. A return on equity 1999. I'm going to control home because that's what no cell references mean. No limit of names, unique names for a specific workbook. So we've already had uh, total expenses, right? So you can't use it a second time. However, I will show you a trick in just a moment. Maximum of 255 characters in a name, and you can't use characters like these. Let's, two couple other things about names. If I copy this workbook to another workbook, so I go move or copy, and then I say, uh, I, I, I don't have another workbook open, but I'm going to say new workbook, or if there was a list of workbooks and you selected one, it's copying this sheet tab with all of the 
uh, stuff here, but it's also copying all the names. So those names will appear in a new workbook. Not only that, let's um, copy, and I'm going to show you a cool way to copy the sheet inside this workbook. I can point to 792 when I click and drag up. You can see that piece of paper, and you can see that little arrow. If I hit the Control key while doing this, that plus on the piece of paper right there means I'm copying it. If I then, I'm still holding Control, and I let go of my mouse, I've copied this sheet over. Now, there's sheet one, there's sheet two. What? I thought on this sheet right here, I just called this invoice date. And you can see it up there. Let's check this out over here. Let's highlight this right here. Uh-oh. That seems to violate that rule of unique names. Well, what it did is it created two categories of names. I'm going to control F3 to open up the name manager. And here it is. Now there are, let's see, we were just looking at invoice date. There's two invoices date dates. By the way, you can open this up. Oh, I don't want that. Okay, so two invoice dates. One right there that says uh, scope is 793, and then invoice date, scope is workbook. Okay, so that means throughout the workbook, the name invoice date from the sheet 792 will work, except for on the one sheet 793. When it says scope 793, that's this new sheet we just created right here. That This name only works here. So the scope is the fact that it's only going to work on 793. The scope of this invoice date is in the workbook. So really, uh, you should ha have unique names. However, some people like you know, maybe total revenue, and then they have a bunch of sheets called January, February, March, April, May. But uh, these are unique names. It's just that this one only works on 793. Um, so there you go. That's a bunch of fun things about define names. There's actually a, a lot more things you can do with define names. In this video, we just wanted to see how to create them from the cell ranges and use them in formulas. All right, see you next trick.